Hey guys, it's Landon from RH. I'm doing another video here uh, that shows you um, shows you how uh, to use Inkscape 1.3. So some of my other Inkscape videos were getting a little old. So um, if you haven't watched it yet, I've got another short, like five-minute video that shows you how to set up a kind of base document template for your organization in Inkscape that has some standard layers and, and some colors and some text styles. So what I'm going to do in this video though is I want to show you how you can lay out a form. I've got some videos on form design in Inkscape. Um, some older videos are about five or six years old and I, I watched a couple of those today and they're really horrible so I wanted to redo them. So what I'm going to what I'm going to do a little bit different this time is I'm not going to focus on how to do some of, use some of the basic tools like creating paths and shapes and text. I've got other videos now that show you how to do that in Inkscape 1.3. So in this video, I just want to kind of focus on the actual layout of the form and the positioning of the elements. And then uh, if I have time at the end of the video, I'll, I'll pop it into Nitro PDF and show you how you can create a fillable form after you're done in Inkscape. I may do one more of these videos just to show you how form design works, but we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I've got my base template set up. It's eight and a half by 11. And all I really want is a form that my team can use to take, um, you know, just take meeting notes or enter meeting notes and then uh, that we can attach um, in uh, software like Basecamp. Uh, that's our project management software that we use. Um, you could, you know, we can also store those in the communications folder of our job. So let's just get right into this and, and, and get this done. So I typically have a, uh, a one inch margin on my docs. Um, so this will be one inch. I'm sorry, that's a half an inch. So this will be a one inch. So uh, to do that, I'm gonna come over to my layers. Let me open my layers uh, dialog. And I'm gonna go ahead and set shapes layout as my current layer. I'm going to just pull this over my other screen. You guys won't be able to see it. And then I'm just going to draw a rectangle for now. And when I want to get rid of that stroke. Oh, nope. I want the fill. I want to get rid of the stroke. And then I'm going to make the fill super light gray. A little darker than that, maybe. Okay, and I'm just going to drag that over to kind of show the area that I have on my document that I can actually use. So this is one inch margin now. Okay, and then I'm going to um, come back over here to my layers dialog. I'm going to make the lines layout active because, you know, one of the things that helps you with good form design is to kind of have a grid set up. So I'm going to uh, activate my straight line tool here. And I'm just going to draw a couple paths here. So let's give those a reasonable stroke. I'm going to make them four tenths of an inch. Um, that didn't work. I don't know why that's not working. That's weird. Uh, hmm. That is really weird. I'll go back to. Oh, I don't have my stroke turned on. Yeah, that's probably a little wide there. So zero four. Okay, and I'm going to just go ahead and leave it with the dash pattern. It's okay for what I'm doing. Um, let's make that, I don't need it black though. So let's give it a gray tint. All right, now that I have that first line done, I can just duplicate that. So I'm, I'm going to basically set this up as, as a two column form. So I'm going to pick some reasonable column width here. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go go there, and I'm gonna just duplicate that again, and we'll make a, another. Whoop! We'll make another column of the same width. All right. Then I've got this little white space here. I may or may not use that. I don't know. Uh, but these look like reasonable column widths to me, so I think I'm okay with this. So let's go ahead and lay out this form. Now, one thing I forgot to put in my base document template was my <coughs> was my uh, logo. 
Um, you know what, before you add the logo, let's get a couple other uh, grid lines here. So we're going to do some horizontal lines. So um, I'm going to just, for now, I'm only going to put two in here. Um, we'll see how the rest of this looks. For now, that's what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and grab our, our logo and get it in. So I'm going to go ahead and make that images logo layer active. And we'll import our logo. All right, now the reason I can't see that is because uh, this layer needs to be above all the other layers. And my text layers also need to be at the top. All right, so there's my logo. It's way too big. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to drop that into place here. Okay. All right, then we're going to um, bring our title over. So I'm just going to duplicate this placeholder text. All right, I've got a problem. This rectangle, what layer is that on? That is on shapes layout. All right. Oh, you know what? My other text. I've got some text that's not on the right layer. So let's do that. Okay. So now my text is showing up. I'm just going to drag that over to the title layer. Okay. So I'm going to. So sometimes you got to turn off your bounding box snap to get your text snap to work. All right. So there's my title. And this is going to be, uh, we're just going to say, oh, meeting notes. Okay, um, and it, I'm okay with it running over this column line here because this is all kind of like a header almost. All right, so then we want to go ahead and, and get some um, information in down below here. Um, so I'm going to just duplicate this and we're going to use it as a subheading. And I'm going to change the height. So I'm going to go way smaller. Let's go 16. <clears throat> and then I'm going to say, um, attendees. Okay, now one thing I'm going to do, just um, I'm going to go ahead and set this up. I'm going to change my grid. Because uh, I want a two tenth text baseline grid, that's what I normally use. Um, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make my Y spacing two tenths, and I've got other videos that show you how to, how that works. But now you notice this text is getting a little bit tight here. Um, it's going to be too tight on a two tenth grid. So I'm going to go back to my font and make that 14. All right. Okay, so we need to add a, a couple boxes here for the attendees, and um, I'm set up. I've got a nice grid where I can do that. So what I'm going to do though is uh, I got to go back and adjust my grid again. So I'm going to set this back to a tenth of an inch. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to draw some boxes. I'm going to make them white. Uh, we just want some rectangles, and I'm not going to put a stroke on them, and you're going to see why I don't put a stroke on them. And I'm not going to put a stroke on them because um, when we make them a fillable PDF, we, we aren't going to want that. So I'm going to go ahead and take the stroke off. All right, let's see, something is up here. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Let's drag that up. Okay, so I actually need a new layer. I'm gonna make that uh, blue for now, just so I can see it. I need a new layer, so let's make a new layer. So I'm gonna call this uh, Shapes. Um, text fields. All right, and then I can drag that rectangle onto that layer. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to go back and make our document grid uh, two tenths again. 
and then we're going to position our text box so that the text in the box will be roughly aligned on that grid. And the way I'm going to do that is um, I want, so the, if I put the text in now, it will roughly line up on this line for the 2 tenth grid. Okay, and so now we can put in some attendee boxes and I'm only going to do six. I hope we don't have more than that. Uh, you know what? We'll do eight. Let's do eight. Okay, so you can see how that lock lines out on our grid. Then I'm going to copy this subheading here. <clears throat> I'm going to give myself a little more white space. And then we're going to call this meeting notes. We'll just put notes. And there's some different ways you can do this. So you might you might make one giant text box, but I'm going to encourage my folks to be brief. But I'm going to copy the same box down here. Okay, but I'm going to run this. I'm going to run this all the way over to the edge here. I didn't. I didn't quite. Ooh. Oh, you know what? My my layout, my other my other uh, layout box got got switched to the wrong layer. All right, so then I can just copy these down. And if you wanted, you could you know you could put a little bullet in there, a little bullet point if you wanted. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, you know maybe I can. I don't think I'm going to do that. Yeah, maybe we will. Now, I'm going to leave one spot on this form, so I'm going to just pull this up. I'm going to leave one spot on this form where uh, my long-winded folks that need to ramble um, can ramble. So I'm going to do a couple, a couple uh, longer boxes here for the people that need to write run-on sentences they can't help themselves. All right. Now I said I, I wanted to do some bullets, um, so let me show you. I'm just going to make some room here to do some bullets. And I'm only going to do one. I won't. I won't make you guys watch me do them all. But we'll just put a little bullet in here. <clears throat> okay. Now I don't want it to be that color. So let's use one of our standard colors. And then we'll just center it there. So now we can move these bullets. Okay, and then the last thing I'll do is uh, I will change those bright blues to something a little more subdued. Because um, that'll, that'll help us when we go to do the PDF layout. So I'll just take these and we're going to make them a really light gray. I think that's that's a good gray. Now before we export to PDF, um, we'll want to turn off our layout lines. So let me pull up my layers. So we'll... we'll um, We'll turn off these layout lines. We don't need. Oh. Okay, then we can just save this to PDF. Okay, and this is actually a meeting notes form. Okay, so in the next video, guys, what I'm going to do is we'll pop this open in our Nitro PDF viewer, and uh, we'll create a fillable PDF. Thanks for watching.